Florida's role in history is often forgotten, no more so than here at Fort Clinch. Let's bring the past into the present. Fort Clinch is located on an area of land between the Cumberland River and the St. Mary's River on what is Fernand Eden Beach. The first fortification on this bit of land began in 1736 under the Spanish in what was then East Florida. The original fort would change hands between the Spanish and British until the eventual annexation of Florida by the United States in 1821. By this point, America was in the process of building strong, five-pointed star forts along its coast to prevent invasion. Known as the Third Fortification System, they were built of brick and stone and included bomb-proof rooms called casemates and cannon openings in a fort itself called embrasures. These forts would be constructed between 1817 and 1867, and the idea behind them came from the fallout of the British invasion in the War of 1812. The fort that exists today began in 1847 and would be named after General Duncan Lamont Clinch of Second Seminole War fame after his death in 1849. Construction would be slow and completed in two phases, which can be seen by the size of the bricks at the fort. The larger gray bricks would be used between 1850 and 1860, and the smaller red bricks would be used between 1862 and 1867. Now if you're asking yourself, Scott, why was the fort completed in two separate phases? Well, the answer is the Civil War, which disrupted construction, leaving the fort only two-thirds complete and with no cannons mounted on its exterior. When Florida joined the Confederacy, the Union abandoned the post, leaving it for the Confederates, who quickly established batteries on the surrounding land and Amelia Island. As the war progressed and the Confederates moved soldiers around, General Robert E. Lee ordered the fort be abandoned, and in March 1862, the Union reoccupied it, particularly Company E of the 1st New York Volunteer Engineers. The New York Volunteer Engineers would work on improving the post well after the Civil War, until the Army left it in caretaker status after 1869. Fort Clinch would remain in caretaker status for the next 40 years, until a little rebellion in Cuba would shake the United States. Spain was holding on with all its might to the last holdout of its once great empire. Its navy, a far cry from the armada that once massed in the English Channel, was still a formidable force. In a showing of diplomatic peacekeeping, the United States ordered the battleship USS Maine to Havana Harbor. Then, on February 15, 1898, an explosion rocked its hull and it quickly settled to the bottom of the port. America would begrudgingly go to war with Spain, led by Assistant Secretary of the Navy and soon to be Lieutenant Colonel of New York Volunteers, Theodore Roosevelt. For its part, the Army would reactivate Fort Clinch as an active base and use it for barracks and an ammunition depot. Guns would finally be mounted on its exterior walls and a minefield was laid surrounding the fort. Behind me is one of the Rodman guns. About 40 of these would have been in place on Fort Clinch to protect the harbor and the east coast of Florida. As quickly as America rushed to war, it was short-lived and over in a couple months. Theodore Roosevelt and the Rough Riders would storm San Juan Hill, Admiral Dewey would become the toast of the country for his capture of the Philippines, and the Spanish Navy was all but neutralized in Santiago Bay. Isolationist policy is won out despite a now overseas empire, and Fort Clinch was once again abandoned and left in caretaker status. When you walk around Fort Clinch, it's like a maze. You could easily get lost. This is awesome. In 1926, with seemingly no use for Fort Clinch, the army sold it to private entities who neglected it. With the election of Franklin Roosevelt and his New Deal policies, America was slowly climbing out of the Great Depression, including Fort Clinch. Its historical value was recognized and it was named a state park in 1935. The following year, the Civilian Construction Corps began to restore the fort. CCC Company 1420 would construct a museum, a campground, and roads, as well as remove the excess sand and debris from inside the fort. A statue at the entrance of the fort memorializes their hard work. Fort Clinch State Park would open in 1938. That is not to be the end of the story, however. With the Second World War breaking out in Europe and Asia, Fort Clinch was to serve as a surveillance and communication center. With the conclusion of the war, Fort Clinch was returned to its civilian state park status. Anybody need to use the bathroom? It may not seem important, in fact, hidden away in the far northeast corner of the state may not even be acknowledged but by the occasional passerby or beachgoer, but Fort Clinch served a steady role in America's history. It was an active fort through three wars, was briefly occupied by an enemy force, and saw many phases of completion and disrepair. It serves as a perfect time capsule of each era that it existed in, and is a piece of history that needs to be remembered and explored. Thanks to the Civilian Conservation Corps, we were able to see the fort and walk the grounds and picture life before the modernism of the late 20th century. 
It truly is bringing the past into the present. That does it for this video on Fort Clinch. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Past and Present 4. Thanks for watching.